you know, when you take a look at these ellipses, you notice that some of them are, are kind of, you know, bowed out and kind of narrow, and some of them are more kind of circular. Well, there's actually a measure that we can find that tells us if the ellipse that we have, just given an equation without even graphing it, is one of these really kind of overly exaggerated ellipses or, or something that's much more closely to resembling a, a regular circle, more, more symmetric in a way. And this is uh, the measure that we use is called um, eccentricity. And I want to show you exactly how to compute this particular number. So, so first of all, if we're given uh, a standard um, ellipse, and so we have uh, x squared over or a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1, and um, let's just assume here just for fun that a is greater than b, and of course they're both positive, then you can actually compute this constant e which equals c over a. Well, a, of course, we know that's that positive number a here that's being squared downstairs. But c is a little bit more interesting. c is the square root of the differences of the squares, um, uh, uh, namely the denominators. And that's why it's important that a is bigger than b, because when I subtract these guys, I'm going to want, in fact, the, the square root to actually exist, to be a real number. And so basically, let's think about this now. Suppose that, that c were, were, was to be very, very, very small. If c were to be very, very small, I'm sorry, if e were to be very, very small, then what would that mean? It would mean that c is small. How do you make c small? The way you make c small is to have, in fact, um, a squared and b squared be really close to each other. So their difference would be very close to 0. I, ideally, if it was like 0, then they would be equal. If they were equal, notice in that case we get a circle. So the smaller the value e is, the more round and circular-like it is. And the larger e is, the more extreme it's going to be. Now, what's the biggest that e could be? Well, if you notice, no matter what, c is always going to be um, less than uh, a. So I always have a number that's smaller than the denominator uh, in the numerator, which means this number can never actually get up to 1. So the closer it is to 1, the more exaggerated. The closer it is to 0, the more uh, round. So for example, if e were to be something like 0 0.89, very, very close to 1, we'd expect some kind of very exaggerated ellipse like that. Whereas if we had something like um, uh, 0 0.09, that's actually very close to 0, we'd expect something that actually looks almost like a circle. And if we're looking at something like you know, 0 0.6, that's something that's kind of in the middle, and we get something that's, that's not nearly as pinched in a way. And so this eccentricity al allows us to measure, in some sense, the pitchness. So that's kind of cool. Cool. Neat. Great. Let me show you an example. Here's an example. Let's actually find the eccentricity for this particular uh, ellipse. Now, the first thing we have to do is actually write the ellipse in the more familiar form that we're used to, and you know how to do that. The trick, of course, is to make sure we have everything equal to 1, so I need to divide both sides by 45. So if we divide both sides by 45, what do we see? Well, I see 5x squared divided by 45, which is just x squared over 9, plus, and when I divide this by 45, 9 over 45 is just y squared uh, over um, over something very, very good. What is it? It's going to be, uh, I guess, uh, 5. And that equals 1. Great. So that tells me that a squared is 9 and b squared is 5. OK, great. And now I want to find e. So what is e? Well, e, and here's the formula, is just c, something I'll have to figure out in a moment, divided by a. Well, if, if um, if a squared is equal to 9 and a is known to be positive, there's only one solution. a has to actually be the number 3. So we know this is going to be a 3. Now I've got to figure out exactly what that c is. Now what's c exactly? Well, c is the square root of the differences of the squares. So it's going to be 9 minus the 5, right? Because the a squared minus the b squared. So that's just going to be. Uh, the square root of 4, which equals 2. Great, so c equals 2. So this equals uh, 2 divided by 3. Well, 2 thirds, which is, 
you know, 0 0.66666 and so forth. Uh, this is actually, you know, closer to 1 than it is to, to 0. And so, in fact, I'd expect this to be uh, a, a little bit more oval than a, than a regular circle. Of course, this would be a little bit more pinched in a way. And that's what we'd expect to see. And we did that by actually finding the um, eccentricity. So that's kind of cool. OK, good. Let me just show you uh, uh, an example where you can kind of work a little bit backwards. Let's see if we can figure this out together. Suppose we're given the eccentricity is 4 fifths, which is really close to 1. And we're given that the foci are located at uh, plus or minus uh, 3 halves comma 0. The question is, can we actually figure out the equation, the equation for this particular ellipse? So let's see. The first thing we have to do is see if we can find c. Now, we don't know a squared. We don't know b squared. So this formula is not going to help us. But remember, we know that, in fact, uh, c represents uh, half of the distance uh, between the two foci. Or in other words, the distance from the center of the ellipse out to one of the foci, one of the focuses. So for example, since I know that uh, I see that the foci are surround centered around the origin because one is at 3 halves comma 0, and the other one's at negative 3 halves comma 0. Well, 0 is right in between, and so that length right there is actually 3 halves, and we know that actually is equal to this quantity c. And so, like magic, it would seem, we know that c equals 3 halves. Wow. So what is e? Well, e is nothing more than c, which is 3 halves, divided by a. And A is one of the things we need for our formula. So this is awesome. So maybe A stands for awesome. So uh, I know that E is actually 4 fifths. And so what I see here is this equals 4 fifths. And now I can solve for A by, for example, uh, taking uh, the cross product or cross multiply. And I see that uh, 4A equals uh, 5 times 3 halves, which is uh, 15 halves. And so therefore, if I divide both sides by 4, I see that a equals 15 over 8. Wow, I'm halfway home. But actually, I've got a little bit more work to do, so don't get too excited. So there's the 15, uh, there's the 15, uh, uh, 15 over 8, which is a. Now I've got to find out b. How do I do that? Well, let's go back to, uh, to what we know. c, which is this, is equal to the square root of the differences of the squares, which means if I square both sides, c squared, which is 9 fourths, is going to equal the a squared, which is going to be uh, 15 squared over 8 squared minus b squared. And b is what I need. In fact, b squared is what I really need. And so what do I see? Well, what does this equal? Well, 15 squared, of course, is 225 divided by 64. That's 8 squared minus b squared. And I want to solve this for, for b squared. And so when we actually um, add b squared to both sides and then subtract 9 fourths from both sides, I discover that b squared equals 81 over 64. I take the square root, but remember that I don't have to take plus or minus because b is always positive. And so therefore, this tells me that b must be the positive square root of this, which is 9 eighths. So that's the b, and I've got the a, and so I can actually write down the formula if I just look at their squares. Because remember, don't forget, I have an a squared and the b squared down there. And so putting all this together after all your great effort, which I'm very proud of, by the way, I see an equation of the following sort. x squared divided by a squared, which we've already seen is um, 225 divided by 64 plus y squared divided by this thing squared, which is 81 divided by 64, and that equals 1. Looks a little bit complicated, so we'll try to simplify. So if we invert and multiply, we see uh, 64x squared over uh, 225 plus 64y squared over 81 equals 1. And that actually is a perfectly fine way of describing this particular ellipse. It's an ellipse that has uh, eccentricity 4 fifths and has its foci located at plus or minus uh, 3 halves comma 0. 
eccentricity is an important means of measuring how pinched, how narrow, uh, how cigar-like, if you will, a particular ellipse is. Congratulations, and I'll see you soon.